What is going on everybody? MTG here with another episode if you're new to your channel. Hi there. So as you can see from the title down below, we're going to talk one plus 11 versus one plus 10. But can you tell me just from looking at the displays of these devices, which one is which? I mean, I'm looking at them and I can't tell. I have to nitpick, but if you can tell just from the displays, let me know in the comments down below. But here it is, OnePlus 11, OnePlus 10 Pro. I'm gonna compare the two and answer one of the questions um, that I've come across is, should you upgrade from OnePlus 10 Pro to OnePlus 11? So without further delay, let's dive right in. Okay, so starting off with design on both of these devices, they both come with an aluminum frame. However, OnePlus 10 Pro here on the right which is always gonna be on the right side for the remainder of this video, has a matte finish to it, the sides, and the OnePlus 11 has a glossy finish to it. They both have Gorilla Glass fake this on the front and a glass back on the back, and I both have the black colorways here. I wanted to get the green for the 11, but I said easier comparison, and you can at least kind of see the two blacks in person. and. When I look at it in person, the OnePlus 10 Pro black colorway is just a little bit darker. So there is that. Um, another thing here with the design is the camera system. So rather than having a square platform for its camera system, OnePlus 11 now has this huge circular uh, platform and it's built on a polished stainless steel platform, Hasselblad, uh, branding right smack in the middle and Hasselblad uh, printing right here on the side and also P2D 50T on the OnePlus 10 Pro. I, I, I'm glad they got rid of that. It's like a really long, um, like the, it's just like photography to, I, I don't even remember. So I'm not even going to talk about it, but I'm glad that they got rid of it with the OnePlus 11. Just keep it clean. But overall, I like this. Now, um, the unit right here on the OnePlus 11, there are two separate pieces. It doesn't seamlessly um, blend into the side frame. So for those who are wondering, they're two separate pieces. And the same thing does go with the OnePlus 10 Pro. If you already have one, you probably, hopefully have noticed that by now. Now, OnePlus 11 right here has IP64 dust and water resistance. Uh, OnePlus 10 Pro IP68 dust and water resistance. Uh, my personal opinion, I don't really care too much, but if you really want uh, the better IP rating, 10 Pro is going to be the phone you're going to look at. Now, let's flip to the front. Everything else overall is pretty much the same. Like, it feels really uh, familiar in the hand. When I'm holding both, it feels almost the same. Now looking at the front, we're both getting a 6.7 inch AMOLED display quad HD resolution and a 120 hertz adaptive refresh rate, 1300 nits of peak brightness with Dolby Vision support. Now, I personally don't like how the camera front facing camera is positioned in the top left. I kind of wish it was in the center of the phone or they could have kept the OnePlus 7 Pro and had a mechanical uh, mechanism, which I personally didn't mind. And that was my favorite uh, display uh, ever because there was nothing to get in the way of that display. Anyway, OnePlus 11 has a slightly, a very slightly less curve to it. And I hope by next year, they fully get rid of the curve. I don't really see the need to it, so I don't know why you know, they have that curve, but it's there for those that need it. But overall, like we're getting a very familiar design, uh, just this camera cut out. Um, I've heard things about like design identity with OnePlus. I, I do see where it's going, but I feel like the identity with the 10 Pro to the 11 is more similar than it is different. If you want to compare the identity with the 7 Pro to the 8 Pro, it was more f similar than it was different. I feel like OnePlus 9 Pro to 10 was just a little bit different, but here the jump year over year is very similar. And I, I like it. Like I don't think we need a drastic design change to say, hey, that's a big improvement on the smartphone. I feel like the big improvements come internally, which is where I'm diving in next with software and performance. So these both 
have Android 13 as of right now. However, OnePlus 10 Pro shipped with Android 12. OnePlus 11 ships with Android 13. Four years of software updates with the OnePlus 11. Now they're both running Oxygen OS. However, it looks very similar to ColorOS. It has the same elements. And personally, I, I don't mind it. Like, I like it. I wish stock Android look and feel was on both of these devices, but it's not. Now, the chipset here, Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 with the OnePlus 10 Pro and Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 with the OnePlus 11. Which one's going to be better? Obviously, the 8 Gen 2. Is it going to be a huge, substantial improvement? No, but you're definitely going to see some improvements. Now, the storage-wise and RAM, 8 gigs of RAM and 120 gigs of storage for both for their base models. But when we jump up to their top end, uh, OnePlus 11 comes with 16 gigs, which I actually have right here, 16 gigs of RAM and 256 gigs of storage, and 12 gigs of RAM and 256 gigs of storage. And the RAM here on the OnePlus 11 is LPDDR5X and UFS 4.0. With the OnePlus 10 Pro, it is LPDDR4 with UFS 3.1. But overall, like, um, you're going to be getting very similar uh, performance in software and just general daily use. Moving on to the camera department, I'm just going to place them down here so we can take a look at both of them. Uh, OnePlus 11, start with this device right here. OnePlus 11 comes with a 50 megapixel f1.8 uh, aperture, 40 megapixel f2.2 ultra wide, and a 32 megapixel f2.0 telephoto with 2x zoom. Now, OnePlus 10 Pro, 40 megapixel f1.8 main, a 50 megapixel f2.2 ultra wide, and an 8 megapixel f2.4 telephoto with 3.3x zoom. Now, specs out of the way, um, I'll be putting up sample images. They get the job done. They're really good. Um, I would still prefer OnePlus 11 over the OnePlus 10 Pro. Uh, but overall, like it's a phone that you're getting good cameras and you're paying the price for a pretty decent camera. Um, and with their collaboration with Hasselblad, you're getting some extra features. But overall, I mean, they're not bad. They're, they're some pretty decent photos. It's good that we're getting a telephoto and we're getting ultra wide. We're getting uh, three uh, different cameras for three uh, different shots. If you want to take an ultra wide, you have an ultra wide. If you want to take a telephoto, guess what? You have a telephoto. Um, but I'd still kind of lean over to the OnePlus 11. Now, other than that, the other features that we get, they both come with 8K 24 FPS video recording. OnePlus 11 goes to 4K 60 frames per second, and OnePlus 10 Pro does 4K 120 FPS. Now, front-facing camera, the OnePlus 11 16 megapixel selfie camera and 32 megapixel selfie camera on the OnePlus 10 Pro. Now, one might ask, why are they bringing down the resolution? Well, Samsung did it with the S22 Ultra to the S23 Ultra. They're bringing down the resolution, uh, but the quality itself does turn out to be much better. Um, but if you have the OnePlus 10 Pro, because obviously I titled this video, should you upgrade it? If, you're going to upgrade to the OnePlus 11 because of the camera. Well, I personally would say don't. You're still getting a good camera system with the OnePlus 11. But if you have something that's like much older, like OnePlus 8 or a 7, then yeah, you're going to see the improvements with the OnePlus 11 camera. And that's going to bring me into battery. So we're both getting 5,000 milliamp hour battery cells with, the, with both of these devices, OnePlus 10 Pro and the 11. Uh, and here in the US, they both come shipped with 80 watts of SuperVOOC wire charging. But the difference lies in the fact that OnePlus 11 omits wireless and reverse wireless charging, and OnePlus 10 Pro ships with 50 up to 50 watts of wireless charging. Well, like, I, I get it, but it just feels weird. Like, one year they add a feature, the next year they get rid of the feature. Like, if you're gonna keep a feature, just keep it. If you're gonna get rid of it, then don't even add it at all. Uh, I, like, I personally don't mind that the OnePlus 11 uh, 
doesn't have wireless charging because I'm not going to be using it for this device because it has super fast charging. That fast charging makes up for not having a wire, wireless charging. But for those like who do use wireless charging or you market it one year saying, hey, look, our smartphone has this feature. And then next year you get rid of that feature. It just it seems a bit off and a bit odd for me. I, I think they were, you know, trying to decrease the price and cutting corners. I get that, but I'd still like if you're not going to if you're gonna get rid of it, just don't add it or just keep it. I, I'm, there's a lot of opinions uh, and suggestions and thoughts about that, but just know you're not getting wireless charging with the battery life. And with daily use, definitely uh, the optimization with Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 on the OnePlus 11 and the battery life has been much better. This lasts me all day. OnePlus 10 Pro would not. Like I would be down to like 10, 15 at the most 20 percent if i use a little bit lighter with uh, about five and a half hours of screen on time with the one plus 11 i'm getting six and a half to seven hours of screen on time with like the same amount so there's a substantial improvement in battery life itself capacity is the same but the optimization with um, software and with the snapdragon 8 gen 2 has definitely shown uh, its improvements and that's going to lead me into my last topic is the price. So the starting prices for both of these devices, uh, $699 for OnePlus 11, $799 for OnePlus 10 Pro. And that's for the 8 gigs RAM and 128 gigs of storage model. And the higher end configuration, $799 for OnePlus 11 and $869 for the OnePlus 10 Pro. 12 gigs of RAM and 256 gigs of storage for OnePlus 10 Pro highest configuration and 16 gigs of RAM and 256 gigs of storage for OnePlus 11. So obviously I like looking at those prices, I personally would choose the OnePlus 11 and the configuration. You're getting higher RAM and a more faster RAM with OnePlus 11. I believe that like other manufacturers to follow suit and add more RAM. Like, why are we stuck at 12? Like, there was a couple years ago, we were seeing huge leaps from like four gigs of RAM to eight gigs, to 10 gigs, to 12, to 16. I've seen 18, 20 gigs of RAM phones uh, on the news before, but now I feel like we're just stuck at like 12 gigs. Like, so we're going back up to 16 again, but let's bring that 16 gigs of RAM back for other OEMs. I'm talking about to those other OEMs, bring them back, OnePlus, keep it even add it like when i first discovered oneplus i was like wow i love how they're adding the latest and greatest but even kind of pushing it you know having 8 10 12 gigs of ram where other smartphone competitors were having like 6 8 gigs and that for me was one of the key reasons why i picked the oneplus 7 pro at the time like i was the only one that had a oneplus device working at best buy and all of you know, my colleagues, they were rocking other devices that didn't have the same specs. And I'd be like, yeah, my phone has a 12 gigs of RAM. That's more than the RAM that I have. And more, this is, this RAM is double the RAM than my M2 MacBook Air. Nonetheless, I'm not going to compare the two, but it just goes to show like, why don't we, why can't we add more RAM? Uh, I, it's a whole different discussion of, you don't need to add more RAM, this, that, but I some people like seeing those bigger numbers. And for me at the time, picking up the OnePlus 7 Pro, I liked seeing that bigger number. But nonetheless, getting back to price, you're getting a better value with the OnePlus 11. It's making the improvements in the right departments with the battery life, uh, with its software optimization and its performance, and with the improvements in the camera. Uh, you're getting a great package with the OnePlus 11. Now, my final thoughts, like there are key improvements um, that enhance the experience when you're comparing the two, when you're switching from 10 Pro to the 11. And like I said, battery life, speed, performance, and the camera. But is it a reason to in, in upgrade? That's the final question. My final thought is no, it's not a reason to upgrade because OnePlus 10 Pro is still gonna perform really well in 2023. We're at, a, we're at a point where smartphones have gotten so well that like we don't necessarily need yearly smartphone uh, releases. That's, I'm just throwing it out there. We don't really need a 
OnePlus 10 Pro and then a OnePlus 11 and then OnePlus 12 because they've gotten so good. I think software, uh, you can push out software updates every year, but the overall hardware has been getting really well. We've hit, we've, I believe we've hit peak smartphones. So uh, year over year improvements have kind of shrunken down compared to past years. And now the improvements come into uh, user performance. How will these improvements help the user on day to day regarding its speed, software usage, its battery life, uh, its camera? How will these key features help the user? I don't think we need to have a different design every year because look at it. We don't. Not anymore. If you want to compare OnePlus 10 Pro 11, we don't have a huge drastic design change. Just the camera module, the unit has changed. That's really it. Um, S22 Ultra to S23 Ultra. We don't have a huge change in design. We just don't. Um, but OnePlus 10 Pro, I'll still say it has an edge in a couple areas like wireless charging. Uh, it has IP68 water and dust resistance. OnePlus 11 doesn't. So if those things are features that you still care about, then I'd say stick with it. Other than that, like overall, they're both great packages. Don't need to upgrade though. However, however, if you're coming from an older device, even like I would go as far as to say like OnePlus 9 Pro, you're going to see some good improvements um, from 9 Pro to the jump with, to 11. Uh, 8 Pro definitely and 7 Pro you're going to see improvements. And if you don't have a OnePlus device and you're looking to get into a OnePlus device, I think now's the time. OnePlus, um, I, I, you should probably um, stick with this type of um, path and kind of go back to your roots. Offer the same great value, amazing premium device at a, at a much more affordable price think about what the users need um, what your core audience is looking for and i think you'll be able to bring back more people i mean i've been using oneplus since the oneplus one i've been following oneplus since its initial release with its first smartphone i've used oneplus one oneplus 3t i've seen oneplus 5 7 pro like i've I followed the entire portfolio of OnePlus. I hope uh, we get back into that original groove. But yeah, that's really been it for this video. I hope you guys did enjoy. I hope you guys do and like the wallpapers you see on both of these devices. My latest wallpaper pack is called Nebula. I'll be leaving a link in the description down below if you want to check it out. But if you did enjoy this video, be sure to zoom in the like button, comment down below. And best of all, share this video because it really does help out the channel a lot. It will help push my content out to more people. That's been it for me. I'll catch you guys in the next episode.